So I'd like to share with you my solution to problem 3.1 from this assignment. I mentioned in class that I felt this problem was, you know, it looked deceptively simple. Um, and I thought I'd step through the, the way I was thinking and how I came to a solution. So this is basically a problem in which we have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we have copper that has some vacancies. You heat it up, it expands, it creates vacancies, and it wants to know how much of the expansion is due to vacancy formation and how much of it is due to uh, bond extension. Uh, it gives this linear thermal coefficient of expansion. And up here at the top, I give the volumetric change uh, due to thermal expansion. And this is the uh, volumetric coefficient of thermal expansion. The volumetric coefficient of thermal expansion is related to the linear by a factor of three. And I would ask why three, why not alpha cubed? And I think that the simple answer is, is that taking alpha cubed uh, is going to give you units of uh, degrees centigrade to the minus three, which is the wrong units for a uh, linear expansion. And I haven't seen the derivation myself, but my assumption is that there was a uh, Taylor expansion. The Taylor expansion, the second term of the Taylor expansion is the derivative. So the derivative of alpha uh, cubed would give you three alpha squared, and then the cubed was dropped. Uh, I'm not entirely certain if that's really where it came from or not, but that's my first guess. None nonetheless, this is uh, just some detail that I included. Let me show you the derivation now. So, ah, try to make the screen bigger. There it is. Huh. Okay. Sorry, my screen is not playing along. Okay. So what I said was that at room temperature, which I'm calling RT, you have atoms. You have a, a set of vacancies, and I put the vacancies just in a little pour. I cluster them together. You know the number of vacancies per atom because they give you that in the problem. You increase the temperature. When you increase the temperature by <clears throat> delta T, you increase the number of vacancies by what I'm calling X. That means you result in a system which is a little bit bigger and beta, that's the macroscopic uh, volumetric thermal expansion. So it includes everything. Uh, you have atoms which have expanded, the vacancies which are now expanded because the site that the vacancy sits is larger and little block of X, which are extra vacancies, and they also have the same volume per atom. So if I take this, I know that at room temperature, the total volume is due to the volume of atoms plus the volume of vacancies. And I know the volume of vacancies are gonna be the same as the volume per atom including in the number of vacancies. So I treated these as molar volumes. So that would be meter cubed per mole. So for one mole of atoms, there's going to be one times 10 to the minus 10 mole of vacancies. So if you have that, you can substitute it in to here. And that will give you uh, that will give you the total volume at a room temperature entirely in terms of the atoms. And then you can simplify that. And then this term, I just lumped that into a variable, I, I, a parameter, I just called it y. And I did that because it's easier than carrying around uh, 
one plus one times 10 to the minus 10. So next, if you come over and you look at the uh, near the melting temperature, which is, I can't remember, that's given in the problem. The total volume is the volume of the atoms at melting temperature, the volume of that vacancy cluster, and the volume of the extra vacancies. So I can write the volume of the atoms as the volume of the atoms at room temperature plus the volume of the atoms at room temperature times beta star delta T. Now this, this beta star is not the same as the beta given in the problem. This beta star, these are just the bonds only. So I specified that I could break beta into a bond part and into a vacancy part. And we'll get to the vacancy part toward the end. But for now, just know that beta star uh, is the expansion assuming no vacancies and uh, it should be less than beta. Okay, so we've got this term now. And that is in terms of the volume of the room temperature atoms. Next, we can talk about the vacancies. So the vacancies depend on the expansion or the, the volume of the vacancies plus the volume of the vacancies in the same expansion because we know that beta star is going to be the same for atoms and their, their vacancies, which then allows us to substitute in uh, in this term. So we can get the vacancies in terms of the volume of atoms at room temperature and this beta star. Okay, so far so good. And next we have to take into account those extra vacancies. And there's two ways to do that. So I, I took two approaches. One approach is to, and this is a little bit messy how I wrote this, I'm sorry. Uh, but one approach here, whoop, ah. one approach, is to say that if I know the uh, room temperature vacancies that are added, and I know that because I know the room temperature vacancies and I know the ratio of the low to high temperature. So I'm just gonna put these vacancies in at low temperature. And after I put those in at low temperature, then I'm going to apply an expansion to those same atoms using beta star, or so those, those same uh, vacancy sites, and that will give me the vacancies, the extra vacancies at the melting temperature. The other approach is to say instead that, okay, if I know the, uh, if I know the number at uh, the melting temperature, and I know the number of vacancies at the melting temperature because I know the ratio, then I can take and I can substitute in and figure out the, uh, I substituted in this here. to get the, the volume of the vacancies at the melting temperature. And these two are the same. So whether I put the vacancies in at low temperature and raise it to high temperature, or I just go straight to high temperature and I substitute the volume, I get the same solution. So if I do that, now I can express the total volume at the melting temperature in terms of the 
atoms the melting temperature plus the vacancies at room temperature plus the extra vacancies at room temperature. And all of these terms are in terms of the volume of atoms at room temperature. So I can take and simplify pulling this term out. And then with a little bit more manipulation, I get the volume of the atoms at the room temperature multiplied by some number multiplied by one plus beta star delta T. And for simplicity, I took that number and just call it a Z because that's going to make manipulating the, the, the math a little bit easier. Okay, so I now know this. And I know the uh, volume total of the uh, room temperature uh, block, also in terms of the volume of the atoms. And lastly, I know the volume at the melting temperature in terms of the total volume at room temperature using that volumetric thermal expansion. So that's beta, not beta star. So that means I can set these two expressions equal to each other. And if I set those two expressions equal to each other, I get this. The volume of the atoms at room temperature, those are going to cancel out. And you're left with a little bit of simple algebra. So within this, I've got beta, which is the total observed thermal expansion. I've got beta star, which is the expansion due to the bond extension. And I have beta double star, which is the volume expansion due to the vacancy formation. And I can solve this to get the volume expansion due to bonds, substituting in the values for Z, Y, delta T, and beta. I can compute my, well, the total thermal expansion. I've got the thermal expansion due to the bonds and the thermal expansion due to vacancies. And they seem to make sense saying that the thermal expansion total has to be larger. It's the sum of the two. It says that the bonds uh, thermal expansion is larger than the vacancy thermal expansion. And if we take beta double star divided by beta, we see that the vacancies account for about 2% total of the thermal expansion. And uh, this was my solution to problem 3.1. And I, I think what I like about the problem, well, it's it's busy, but what I like about the problem is that it makes you think about what's happening in terms of the picture of I have a starting state, I have an ending state, and if I have multiple paths to get to that, that should be equivalent. For example, I can add up what's happening inside, or I can use my macroscopic observable uh, thermal expansion, then I can set those two paths equal to each other and I can find information about the parameters going into it.